Hey guys, so today's video is going to be about Endgame in Black Desert. So before I start talking about Endgame in Black Desert, first let me talk about Endgame in other games. So Endgame is, in most games, the part of a game that comes at the end, which is stupidly simple, right? But it gets a little more complex from there based on what type of game it is, and even the game itself based on the genre. Start off with single player RPGs such as Pokemon, Dark Souls, uh, pretty much any single player experience, uh, Skyrim. The end game is usually defined by the last arc in the story. So once you have finished leveling up, you've finished getting all your gear, your characters are all near max level or high enough that they can deal with the final bosses, and you start the final quest. For Pokemon, this would be the Elite Four or anything that comes after. For Skyrim, uh, not a great example because there's so much you can do, but generally it's when you're taking on the final dragon, and so on and so forth based on the single player RPG. Now, for online or multiplayer games, especially competitive games, it can get a bit more difficult to determine what endgame is. League of Legends, for example, is a game where the game starts anew with every single game, which means you've got a very well-defined early game, which is laning phase, mid-game, which is team fighting and going for objectives, and end or late game, which is when the characters are all max level or close to it, they've all got full item builds, and really a single team fight will determine the victor. In a game such as Counter-Strike, Endgame is usually the last few rounds in the series, but it's a lot harder to find because Counter-Strike, you start over anew a lot more often than in League of Legends, with only economy carrying over between rounds. In an MMO, which is where Endgame is really from, such as World of Warcraft for example, Endgame is usually whatever comes after leveling. So once you reach max level and start gearing up and going for the final part of the game, which is usually the largest part of the game. Endgame is usually most of the game in MMOs because Endgame is where the developers know most of their players will hit, and thus that is where they focus most of their time on to improving. For World of Warcraft, Endgame is pretty much everything after leveling, so dungeons, raids, mythics, uh, battlegrounds, all of that would be Endgame content. Now, Black Desert, Endgame is pretty simple to look at. There's PvE Endgame, which is Mostly once you've hit like level 60, 61, and you've got close to soft cap gear, if not soft cap or above, and you can do stuff such as Histria or Giffen Razia. For PvP endgame, that's even easier. It's Node Wars, and the true endgame, like the Holy Grail, would be a siege. So Valencia, Balanos, uh, any of the sieges would be the true PvP endgame. It's not really fighting 1v1 for a spot at a grinding rotation, it's Node Wars and sieges. However, Black Desert, as a sandbox MMO, has a few differences in its endgame compared to other games. And that is that Black Desert doesn't have just a PvE and a PvP endgame, there's also sort of an extension of the PvE endgame in that it's got a life skill endgame. So the point of this video is kind of discuss what endgame is in Black Desert, what constitutes endgame, as well as why you don't need to feel bad about not necessarily focusing on getting to soft cap or above so you can focus on PvP, or getting to 62 or above and trying to do stuff like Histria, because there's a lot more to Black Desert's endgame than there are in other games where endgame is purely one or two other activities. So the life skill endgame in BDO has quite a few different facets to it. I was talking to a few people on Discord the other day, and I've also talked with this with a few people in comments, as well as in-game itself, and Black Desert's endgame definitely feels pretty expansive, compared to other games because of how much there is to do that you can really focus on uh, outside of PvP and pure PvE as in player versus environment or monster endgame. So one of the most obvious endgame things that players can do for life skilling is sea monster hunting. Now I know we've talked a lot of shit about sea monster hunting in the last few months because Quite honestly, the amount of silver that brought into the economy until the nerfs was absolutely broken, and even now, it still brings in tons of silver every week into the economy, with very few mitigating circumstances. However, sea monster hunting is definitely an endgame life skill content for most players. In order to do proper sea monster hunting, you generally want to have an Aferia boat, which is quite the investment, both either in terms of time and life skilling, or in terms of silver if you can find anyone that actually is willing to sell an Aferia on the marketplace. 
And then you need to start leveling your sailing, equipping your boat, and actually performing sea monster hunting. I would consider sea monster hunting to be one of the more obvious life skill endgame parts of Black Desert. Now there are other things that are considered endgame in terms of life skill in Black Desert, but a lot of them are doable quite early on in a player's career, which is why a lot of players don't consider life skilling to be an endgame activity in Black Desert. It is certainly an activity that a lot of players do in Black Desert, like I pr think pretty much every single player uh, in most high-end guilds will probably be doing processing or fishing or some other variant of life skilling overnight to earn money AFK. Uh, most of them probably do gathering and grinding so that they can do cooking and alchemy by using the byproducts to create uh, alchemy and cooking utensils. And most players will perform some sort of life skilling just to have fun in sort of the off time when they don't want to grind or they don't want to do PvP. However, because so many of the life skills are fairly one-dimensional in how they're done, a lot of players don't consider them to be endgame content. But really, uh, I, want, I want to reassure a lot of the players that are probably listening to this video and going, yeah, but they're not endgame content. I'm not an endgame player. Yes, life skilling is endgame content. There are lots of guilds devoted purely to life skilling. And it's not like endgame in other games doesn't involve non-PvP or PvP activities. Most MMOs actually do have lots of stuff you can do once you reach max level, or even beforehand, that doesn't necessarily need to involve leveling up, killing things, or being geared. World of Warcraft, for example, has pet battles, achievement hunting, uh, Guild Wars 2 has achievement hunting, you can search for secrets, there's completion activities. There's a lot, a lot more to do in Endgame than just having to grind for gear and levels. And one of the advantages to life skilling and other endgame activities that don't necessarily involve combat or gear in Black Desert is that Black Desert's endgame is really, it revolves around gaining stupidly high amounts of silver and then converting those that silver into items. Uh, you want to convert your silver into pens and occasionally tets or other best in slot items so that your character gets stronger. And every activity in the game pretty much will allow you to do this. Silver is so easy to come by uh, from pretty much any activity, that any activity you do is contributing to helping you reach endgame in PV and PvP, even if you're not doing those activities. Now, obviously, the amount of silver you get will vary immensely based on the activity you do, and personally, I think that endgame life skills, you can generally determine how endgame a life skill is by how much money you make from it. Now, obviously not all life skills are the same. You're going to make a lot more money from sea monster hunting, so sailing and hunting, than you will from a life skill such as alchemy, which is pretty much a money sink that you use to advance your character's strength because alchemy stones are pretty useful, and alchemy has quite a lot of useful byproducts. But the point of this video is don't worry if you're not always doing grinding, you're not always doing PvP, and you're not always just looking for your next enhancement material to advance the state of your gear. Doing life skills, doing sort of non-combat related stuff, doing pretty much anything in the game that gives you silver will allow you to reach endgame faster, and you could be doing endgame activities right now and not even be aware of it because you personally don't think that those activities are endgame because there's something you're doing and you aren't endgame, so how could these be endgame activities? They are, and I just wanted players to kind of know that. Kind of wanted to mix it up for this video, not really do a standard video, just because it's been a while since I've done a little bit of a more upbeat video, or a video where I kind of explain stuff, and I wanted to take a break, break from all the doom and gloom that surrounded Black Desert in the past few weeks. Uh, I'll be coming out with a video on sort of the resolution of the Russian server problem uh, over the next couple days, as well as a video about how I'm going to be expanding the channel from here. But don't worry, I'm still going to be doing Black Desert stuff, I just also want to expand into other games. Anyways guys, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, comment below what you think Endgame is. Do you think that uh, Endgame has to be purely PvP or PvE oriented? Like, if you're not doing Node Wars, at least like Tier 2 or 3, are you not Endgame? Or is anyone that is doing an activity that requires quite a lot of effort and uh, grinding to get to, such as having a ferry boat so you can do sea monster hunting, or gathering in a far off land, is that Endgame to you? Comment below, let us know. As always, thanks for watching, subscribe if you liked it, and have a good one.